Hello friends, so in this lecture we will discuss about the cyber security issues related to the power system network. So, let us discuss first what is cyber security. So, cyber security is the practice of defending computers, the servers, devices, electrical and electronic systems, networks and data from the malicious attacks. If we have a computer or system or server and that contains a data and if any malicious attacks are there, then the practice of defending such things against any type of attack that is known as cyber security. Now, let us see what are the main objectives of cyber security. So, basically there are three main objectives of cyber security. The first one is the confidentiality. So, preserving authorized restrictions on information access and disclosure are related with the confidentiality. This is mainly to protect the personal privacy and proprietary information. So, all those things are covered under the first objective that is the confidentiality. The second objective is known as the integrity. So, guarding against improper information modification or destructions that comes under the objective of integrity and this is to ensure information of non repudiation and authenticity. So, integrity is related to the destruction or modification of improper information. So, that we want to avoid and that comes under the integrity objective of the cyber security. The third objective is the related to the availability. So, in this objective it is ensured that timely and reliable access to the information for particular users who are intended for. So, those are covered in this type of objective that is availability. Now, let us discuss uh, the what are the various types of cyber attacks possible in any network. So, as you can see the first type of attack possible that is the malware. The second type of attack is known as phishing attack. The third is known as the sphere phishing attack. The fourth one is the man in the middle attack. The fifth one is the denial of service attacks and sometimes it is also related as DOS or termed as COS. The sixth one is the SQL injection attack. The seventh one is the zero day exploit attack. The eighth one is advanced persistence threats, the ninth one that is related to the ransomware and tenth one that is the DNS attack. So, total 10 types of attacks are possible in any network. Now, let us discuss what is the meaning of this attack and how it is possible and on which devices a particular attack is targeted, let us discuss one by one. So, let us start our discussion with the first one that is the malware. So, malware is done by malicious software. So, some malicious software is used to execute such attack and whenever such attack is there, it executes unauthorized action on the victims system. So, unauthorized action is there which is not allowed for a particular system that is done in or that is carried out in this type of attack that is known as malware attack. The second type of attack that is known as the phishing type of attack. So, it is a type of social engineering attack and it is used to steal the user data, maybe some login credentials or credit card details, those things are still using such type of attack and such type of attacks are very, very important in nowadays as we are moving towards digitization of each and every system. The third type of attack that is known as the sphere phishing attack. So, sphere phishing attack is an email or electronic communication scam and in this thing uh, the target audience are a specific individuals, maybe one big organization or small organization or any business company, those are the targeted under sphere phishing type of attack. The fourth type of attack is known as MITM attack that is man in the middle attack. 
So, here in this attack the attacker secretly alters or changes the communications between the two parties. So, the two parties they believe that they are directly communicating with each other, but actually they are not doing that is not the situation when such type of attack takes place. The fifth type of attack is known as denial of service attack. So, in this type of attack normally the machine or the network is targeted and this type of attack is done to shut down a particular machine or to shut down a particular network and hence machine or network is not accessible to the intended users, but now it is accessible to some attackers. So, this is done in this type of attack. The next type of attack is known as SQL injection attack. So, it is SQL is nothing but the structured query language and here in this attack some malicious SQL code is utilized for backend database manipulation to access the information that was not intended to be displayed. This type of attack is there then that includes the items may be including some sensitive company data or may be user list or private customer details all these things are stilled when such type of attack takes place. The seventh type of attack is known as zero day exploit attack. So, this type of attack occurs on the same day when a weakness is discovered in a software. So, at that point it is exploited before a fix that becomes available from its original creator. So, before it detected such type of attack that is already there. The eighth type of attack that is known as advanced persistence threat. So, here an unauthorized user gains an access to a system or for a particular network and it remains there for an extended period of time without being detected. So, the user who is using a particular details that is not aware that some other person is also accessing the same type of data or some other information. The ninth type of attack is known as DNS attack, it is domain name system attack. So, we know that normally DNS system is a crucial part of internet infrastructure and it has many security holes. So, the attacker exploits vulnerabilities available in the DNS attack and then such type of attack takes place. The next attack and the last type of attack that is known as ransomware. So, here in this attack attacker locks and encrypts the victims data may be some important files are there and then the attacker demands a money to unlock and to decrypt the same data or the information some important files. So, this type of attack whenever takes place may be some money is demanded and it takes the advantage of may be human, may be system, may be network or software vulnerabilities to infect the victims devices. So, here the ransomware type of attack is possible on a computer, may be on a printer, may be on a smartphone, may be on a wearable, may be on a point of uh, sale terminal or machine or any other end point. Now, with this background let us see what is the percentage possibility of cyber attack on power utility. So, one survey was carried out by the US Department of Homeland and Securities and in that survey this is done by industrial control system computer energy response team and here the survey was targeted on the cyber attacks that has already occurred in 2013 related to energy industry and they found that out of the total attack 56 percent of the attacks that was on energy related issues. 18 percent of the attacks that was on manufacturing type of systems or industries, maybe you can see that 5 percent of the attacks that is on infotech and maybe another 5 percent of the attack that is on transportation and remainings are there maybe 1 percent, 2 percent or maybe uh, less than 5 percent, but we can say that maximum percentage of cyber attacks that is possible and that was already there 
in 2013 that is on energy related industries or utilities or any other private or public power producers. So, utilities play an important role as an operator of critical infrastructure system and providers of essential service because utility is going to provide very important and several essential service to the customer or consumer. So, cyber attacks may damage the power grid due to which widespread infrastructure failures may occur because utility is providing several services in this services exchange of data is there and if uh, such type of cyber attack is there then widespread failures may occur and we have to prevent such type of attack on the power utility. Now, let us see whether the cyber attacks are actually uh, there or not on power industry. So, the first cyber attack was detected or noticed on Iranian nuclear enrichment facility in 2009 and this attack was because of the malware which was injected through USB drive and the targets are specific SCADA system that is supervisory control and data acquisition system, programmable logic control systems these two things are targeted in this type of attack. The second type of attack that was on Ukrainian power grid which was occurred in 2015 December and in this type of attack this was done because of the installation of the black energy 3 malware and the target are 30 substations were switched off because of this attack and about 230,000 people were left without electricity for a period of 1 to almost 6 hours. In 2017 also cyber attack was detected and that was because of the ransomware virus and this type of attack hit more than 150 countries and again in US in 2017 blackout was observed in three cities and these three cities are Los Angeles, San Francisco and New York and this was also because of the cyber attack. So, let us see what are the various way uh, of cyber attacks that was possible or that is going to occur in power system network. So, here you can see that the two grids are shown one is my conventional grid where the flow of energy is unidirectional only from left to right whereas, in second case the smart grid uh, structure that is displayed and here you can see the energy and information exchange flow both were the bidirectional. So, it can be from left to right or it can be from right to left and here you can see in this uh, middle one the intelligent information infrastructure that was shown and in that management servers are there, satellites are also used may be for communication purpose, recorders are also there, some radio towers are there, modems and wireless points are also there. So, whenever the uh, direction of power flow and information exchange both are bidirectional may be from left to right or may be from right to left then in that case we have to use communication link, we have to use modems, wireless point servers, maybe we have several monitors and controls. So, whenever such things are involved then cyber attacks are always possible in this scenario. Now, if I consider the devices on which cyber attacks uh, are possible then those devices are the phaser measurement units or synchrophaser devices for example, PMUs and micro PMUs. So, here you can see that I have shown you the hybrid AC DC microgrid where the AC grid that is shown by this green color lines or cables or feeders and the DC grids that was shown with uh, this blue color cables. And at various points you can see I have installed the phaser measurement units is basically micro phaser measurement units. So, this were installed at several points and you can see we have a renewable energy sources connected at various points like solar, battery, maybe we have a fuel cell, 
maybe we have a EV charging station, maybe we have also some wind farms are there, diesel generators are there. And this hybrid AC DC microgrid, you can see each PMU installed, they are connected with GPS system and the information exchange that is possible and all these PMUs are sending data to the uh, available nearest PDC that is phaser data concentrator. So, whenever cyber attack is there, communication interface is always there and PDC is further processing the data, Maybe it can be used for state estimation, it can be also used for another application like uh, DSM that is demand side management, Maybe it can be also used for wide area monitoring protection and control or maybe can be used for some energy management system uh, along with this CADA applications. So, all these applications are there and here you can see the information exchange is there through communication network, servers are also involved and hence the cyber attacks are possible. So, we have synchrophaser devices like PMUs and PDC, we are also utilizing in the substation some USB for information exchange for taking the data for transferring the data. So, there also cyber attacks are possible. We are also utilizing intelligent electronic devices installed at various substations. We have also installed smart meters for billing purpose, we have also installed digital fault recorders. So, all these devices are taking data and sending to the main control center and there uh, the information exchange is there. So, cyber attacks are always there. We have main computers and server where data storage is there and for all these devices communication network is there. So, cyber attacks are always possible on all such devices. Now, whenever we consider the synchrophaser technology assisted schemes, then in all these schemes it is assumed that availability and integrity of PMU data are always there. So, if I use PMU based protection scheme, if I use PMU based monitoring scheme, then all these schemes I assumed that PMU data that is available without any attack, without any problem, without any issue and there is no issue of availability and integrity of PMU data. So, any type of attack may be denial of service attack, may be false data injection attack or any type of attack on such synchrophaser data which are used to make certain decisions of the system or of the network, then this can lead to a severe impact on the decision making and several mal operations are also uh, there if such data are uh, uh, impacted means PMU data are impacted then final decision making that is always affected. Now, let us see how the cyber attacks on various layers of communication networks that is possible. So, we have hardware layer and in this layer executing software is required for components such as programmable logic controllers or maybe remote terminal units for exchange of information and controlling purpose. So, here also cyber attacks are possible. The second we are using firmware layer which resides between the hardware layer and the software layer and this includes data and instructions which are used to control the hardware. So, cyber attacks are also possible here. The third type of layer that is known as software layer. So, control center employs a variety of software platforms and applications. So, vulnerabilities in software that may range from simple coding errors uh, to maybe poor implementation of access of control mechanisms. So, these are always there and hence cyber attacks are possible on software layer also. The fourth type of layer that is known as network layer and vulnerabilities can be introduced in the power system control network in many ways like firewalls, maybe modems are also used, field bus network, we have communication systems and routers, uh, remote access points and protocols and control networks are also there. So, there are fair chances of the possibility of cyber attacks on network layer also. The fifth layer is the process layer, all the aforementioned power 
control system layers interact to implement the target power system control process and hence the cyber attacks are inevitable in this situation also. Now, with this background let us see PMU communication network is vulnerable to cyber attacks or not. So, as per the NASPI survey, so it is the national American uh, synchrophaser initiative survey that was carried out in 2016 and most of the existing synchrophaser data networks lack the technical and operational solutions to prevent such cyber attacks. So, whatever PMUs we have installed those PMUs are not capable to prevent or to withstand any cyber attacks. So, if cyber attack is there on PMUs then PMU data are definitely impacted and because of that whatever decision making process is there that is badly affected. Moreover, IEEE C 37.118.2 standard uh, which is meant for synchrophaser data that does not specify any security requirements to protect data communication. So, this was also not mentioned in this. So, synchrophaser technology assisted schemes have presumed that the PMU data that was already available. So, if any type of attacks are there may be we have denial of service attack, may be we have false data injection attacks then whatever applications are there let us say for example, we are using PMUs along with SCADA system then those applications are affected badly and limited research that is there which has addressed the prevention and mitigation of such type of the cyber attacks when PMU data are compromised or impacted. So, now let us see uh, one case study that indicates that what is the impact of cyber attack on PMU data. So, here in this case study we have considered one of the cyber attack that is the denial of service attack and this attack was carried out on synchrophaser data that can create missing data which can disturb the situational awareness of the entire grid or network. So, false data injection attack can force the system operator or may be automated and applications to take wrong decisions and this decisions can harm the stability of the entire power system network. So, whenever attacks on PMU data that can adversely impact several applications. So, if attacks are there on PMU data may be because of denial of service or may be because of let us say false data injection then the packets that is to be sent or received by the PMUs that the, those things were impacted and because of that this impact is going to affect several applications in wide area monitoring protection and control like supervisory protection of transmission lines, may be adaptive relaying, may be SCADA applications like state estimation in which PMU data is used as redundant measurements. So, to understand this an experiment was performed to study the impact of cyber attack on random forest classifier using denial of service type of cyber attack and based on this attack the PMU data that was impacted badly and then that was given to the this classifier and it has been found that because of this the accuracy of this classifier has been reduced tremendously. So, again to increase the accuracy of this classifier the machine learning algorithms are found to be quite effective which can easily assist the PMU data based wide area applications like classifying system stays whether the system is in normal condition or whether the system stays is under stressed condition or not. So, that can be done. So, here what we have done in this case study we have considered a 9 bus system and on this bus system we have considered various uh, stages like uh, let us say normal scenario may be we have con considered the three phase fault at various locations may be line outages we have considered generator outages we have considered and we have uh, assumed that denial of service attack is already there and PMU data that was impacted and based on that. Uh, we have used the random forest classifier and whenever we use a random forest classifier or any classifier then the confusion matrix is the 
uh, one type of parameter which can easily detect whether the accuracy of this classifier is very high or it is not a particular or not up to the mark. So, here what we have found that whenever there was no denial of service attack on the PMU data, then you can see the diagonal elements of this confusion matrix that was accurate and hence the accuracy of this classifier that is very high. However, whenever the denial of service attack that was done on one PMU and because of that, that PMU data was impacted, then you can see that along with diagonal terms in confusion matrix, some non diagonal terms are also introduced which was not there in earlier case. So, that clearly indicates that the accuracy of this classifier that is reduced. Now, here we have assumed that the DOS attack is there only on one PMU data, but if multiple PMU data are impacted, then this accuracy that is going to be reduced more compared to the uh, this case. So, this is going to lead the motivation for cyber security initiative uh, related to the PMU data. So, we know that whenever we have any initiative we have to take, then we have to consider the cyber security life cycle. So, whenever any cyber attacks are there on any power system network, then we need some prevention technique and this prevention techniques are related to maybe game theoretic approaches or maybe some other approaches which are related to risk assessment and mitigation. So, such type of prevention techniques we have to design. Then we have to detect the cyber attacks. So, intrusion and anomaly detections are there based on cyber physical system models approaches. So, we can use several approaches based on game theory, maybe on optimization, control theory, machine learning, maybe pattern recognition. And then we have to go for the mitigation against the cyber attacks. And once we have, then we have to design our system such that it is going to improve the resiliency against the cyber attacks. Of course, forensic and the deterrence are also there when we consider the life cycle related to the cyber security. Now, with this background, let us see that cyber security initiatives that is also there in our country in India. So, in 2000 IT act that was passed which was amended in 2008 and this is dealing with cyber crime and electronic commerce. Based on that national critical information infrastructure protection center was created in 2014 by government of India under section 70A of the this IT act. This NCIIPC has two important uh, tasks. The first is the they provide guidelines for protection of critical infrastructure and they also formed a framework for evaluation of cyber security. Based on this, the computer emergency response team that is CERT in that was formulated under section 70B and the function of this CERT in is to respond to computer security incidents, report on vulnerabilities and promotes effective IT security practices. For industry also, ISO 27001 that was given in 2005 that is also a standard related to information security management system. Indian electricity grid code clause 4.6.5 that is also there which clearly indicates that all utilities shall have cyber security framework to identify the critical cyber asset and protect them against all types of cyber attacks. IS 16335 that was given in 2015 on power control system security requirement. So, this specifies requirement for identification and protection of critical assets for all entities involved in generation, transmission, distribution and trading of electric power. Again in 2016, Central Energy Regulatory Commission 
has given communication system for interstate transmission of electricity regulations and based on this regulations CEA shall formulate and notify technical standards, cyber security requirements, protocol for communication system for power sector within the country including the grid integration with the grid of the neighboring countries. So, all these initiatives that was taken place in our country. So, here in this lecture we started our discussion with the what is the meaning of cyber security. Then we have considered the 10 different types of attacks and that is possible in any network and after that we have seen that if attacks are there on power utility then what are the ways uh, what are the devices on based on which cyber attacks are possible that we have discussed and then at last we have discussed the if cyber attacks are there at different layers of communication then that is also there and then we have discussed the one case study related to the impact of PMU data because of the denial of service type of cyber attack and we have found that the accuracy of a particular classifier that has been reduced drastically. And then we have discussed the several initiatives related to cyber security which was taken place in our country. Thank you.